760 WJR. Hey, we'll take your calls here at the moment. 800 859 800 WJR. I remember specifically when during the first 2020 presidential debate in September of 2020, Joe Biden said out loud, quote, under the Trump administration, America has become weaker, sicker, poorer, and more divided. And he said Trump is the president of screwing things up. And then he said to Trump directly, you're the worst president that America has ever had. Well, of course, that was after one of the greatest economic runs in history, a historic turnaround in energy prices uh, going lower than they had in years, and the best unemployment rate ever for minorities in history. But still, Joe Biden thought he could do better. Well, here we are, a year and a half in Biden's first term, and things have fallen off a cliff. And so Biden's poll numbers, his presidency by the polls, Kevin, is now truly one of the worst in history. So now there's a lot of Democrats saying, yeah, we might want to replace him. And they seem to be doing just that. Yeah, Tom, uh, President Biden really uh, needs to keep his head on a swivel these days. It's it's more than just Fox News and the Republican Party coming for him. His own party may be looking to take him out of the 2024 election. And, um, you know, who in his party will support him and who might betray him? Would would the vice president run against him if Biden runs? What what about governors from large states like California, Illinois, or, or even Michigan? Some are fundraising as if they might. Joining us now is Dave Dulio, director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political science professor at Oakland University. Hey, Dave, how are you? Good morning, guys. I'm well. How are you? Good. Appreciate you being here. So President Biden, he's been asked several times if he's running in 2024. And his answer is always yes, absolutely yes. But everyone just seems to ignore his answer as, as if it's going to change. And, and most Democrats have said they won't run against the president if the president is running. But it seems like nobody believes that he, he is going to run. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I think a, a number of Democrats across the country, uh, Governor Newsom in California, Governor Pritzker in Illinois, and others, uh, they smell blood in the water here. And I think that they are taking steps now to position themselves uh, so that should an opportunity arise, uh, they're prepared for it. And that, you know, that opportunity could come if uh, President Biden decides uh, to change his mind and not run or... Um, if it gets so bad that, that national Democrats go to him and say, hey, Mr. President, we think it's time for some uh, new leadership. Is that a problem to be out raising money for a potential uh, run in 2024 when the president is still saying that he absolutely is going to run, or is that just politics? Uh, it doesn't help, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, and it, it, it creates an awkward situation for Democrats, right? I mean, who's... Um, it, 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 even if they are just out there taking some initial steps to try and, and prep for a possible run, um, you know, it, it, it puts folks in an awkward position. It, it, it brings up questions that the president may have to answer or his surrogates may have to answer about, um, about a potential challenge. When you look at, uh, say, these individual candidates, you know, let's bring up Gavin Newsom from California. Uh, Barack Obama's former chief of staff, David Axelrod, said he's probably the the strongest choice if he's going to primary Joe Biden. Or maybe Joe Biden backs out and then Gavin Newsom runs. But he's incredibly polarizing in his state. When you when you look at him specifically, do you think he's someone that can uh, get out from that polarizing kind of dictatorial type of reputation and look at as as if he's somebody who's going to fix the country? Well, I, I think it, it always is important to, to look at this through a couple of different lenses, right? I think, and, and with, with uh, Governor Newsom, I would point to three different, three different scenarios, if you will, right? One, um, he, he may be uh, uh, popular or at least uh, uh, it, it's, it's plausible for him to be governor in a place like California, uh, which is, of course, very, very different politically than uh, other states and the and the uh, country as a whole. He also may be uh, a plausible candidate in a Democratic primary, but if we think about a general election, um, you know, I, I think that it would it would be very soon, uh, it would be very early in that campaign where Republicans would start to remind people of uh, Governor Newsom's uh, policies during COVID, as well as his uh, uh, do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do moments, and there were a couple of them. 
uh, where you know he had announced uh, uh, restrictions on folks at restaurants and with masks and seemed to ignore them on his own time. So I think that there would be uh, a, there there'd be problems. I think for a a Newsom uh, general election campaign. Well, that's, you could almost say the same thing about. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer, because she was caught doing some of those similar type of things during the COVID lockdowns. But yet she's being bantied about that her name is at least as a potential candidate. She used to align herself very closely to Joe Biden. But recently she said, you know, I'm not really going to weigh in on whether or not Joe Biden should run in 2024. What do you think about her as a potential candidate? Well, I think the list right now for Democrats is long, right? And, and there's no doubt that, that she's on that for for some Democrats. Uh, certainly here in Michigan, as well as as nationally. I look at uh, this um, Turning Point USA straw poll of Democrats difficult to beat, and I just can't believe Joe Biden is number seven on the list behind uh, Gavin Newsom, Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, AOC, and then Joe Biden with 4.4% difficult to beat. How different would a poll like that be uh, by Democrats. Do, do Democrats have more faith in Joe Biden than Republicans or young Republicans? Uh, some. They do, they, yes, but, but there was a poll a couple of weeks ago that, that was out that, that showed that you know, more than half of Democrats uh, would not support him in a, in a primary. Right? So I think, it's, I, I think there's, there's serious questions that have to be asked among Democratic primary voters you know, who they want to be the standard bearer in 2024. But when you push through it all, uh, if it was just Biden versus Trump or Biden versus DeSantis, suddenly Biden's numbers pop way up that Democrats would vote for whatever Democrat ends up being there. Is that correct? No doubt about it. And, and, and that's, there's nothing new about that, right? Even folks who are um, uh, sort of soft or leaners in terms of party identification, right? Not even uh, just strong Democrats, but, but those who claim some independence from the parties, but say that they lean to the Democrats. All of those folks uh, usually back their party's presidential candidate, right? So we're talking 90, 92 percent of, uh, of partisans will, will end up voting for their party's presidential candidate. When you look at the two parties, I mean, I think there's a lot of damage for, on both sides. I think if you look through the lens of the news media, you can see a lot of accusations that uh, would prove negative towards the Republican Party, but also the Democratic Party, because clearly the leader at the top, I guess two leaders, really, when you look at uh, Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi, don't have a lot of favorability. Do you think that the, the brand of the Democratic Party has been damaged to such an extent that there's no other option right now but to pull away from Joe Biden and to get somebody else there? Well, I think, uh, number one, you could throw Chuck Schumer in there as well yes. in terms of, of low favorability. But at the same time, you know, if we looked at Republican leaders' favorability, it's not all that different. So, I, you know, and, and both parties these days are held in pretty low esteem uh, among the public. Uh, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that that uh, that Joe Biden is going to get replaced. I think it, it is it's going to make for an awkward year and a half or so as. You know, uh, you know, as soon as 2022 is over and we get into early parts of 23, we're really going to start to see that we're going to start to see some some decisions that are going to impact 2024 being made by uh, by Joe Biden, uh, by others who, who are thinking about trying to take advantage of his weakness and, and mounting a, a, either a challenge or filling a vacuum. We're just about out of time, but if Joe Biden says he is going to run and does run in 2024, do all of these other candidates drop out? What's the chance someone will primary him? Boy, I think having a, a primarying a sitting president is what would be a very rare and unique situation. Yeah, it happened to Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter still won the primary, but it's been a long time, and it is rare. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Dave Dulio, Director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political Science Professor at Oakland University. Dave, great to talk with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good day, guys. You too. Thanks. 1-800-859-0957. What do you think? Who's going to be in the 2020? I know it's a couple years off, but it's coming sooner than we think. 800 